we shifted into the no-till as a labor saving. Plus, we're in a situation where the top, the middle, and the bottom of the hill are all different. We have silt loans on the top, clay loans in the middle, silt loans again on the bottom because the silt washed down from the middle. So we transferred into the no-till and, and we haven't regretted it. We've been pretty much all no-till since the early 90s. Used a few of the uh, NRCS equip programs, nutrient management programs, kind of adopted the uh, grow the crops on the best, put CRP on the rest kind of approach. With an increase in conservation tillage, there's a sh also a shift in the weeds that growers have to deal with. Generally, there's an increase in small seeded broadleaf weeds, such as mare's tail, water hemp, and palmer amaranth. All of these weeds are very difficult to control and can have a very negative impact on crop yield. One of the advantages that we found with cover crops uh, is actually we can get some weed suppression with those cover crops or you know other people would just say that we're picking our weeds and that might be. I'm picking a weed that can give me the uh, environment to suppress some of the weeds that I really have trouble with. Uh, we, we fight water hemp, pigweed, you know some of the common ragweeds, those type of things. And we certainly had much less pressure or we had better control longer where we had a better establishment of our covers. These soybeans were planted into rye and one of the real benefits of planting soybeans into rye is weed suppression. It's, and it's not 100% control, but it's a definite benefit. And so there's really three mechanisms at work. One is a phenomenon called allelopathy. Uh, plants produce chemical compounds that are chemically active against other plants. There are three identified compounds in rye that are toxic to, for example, the pigweed family and to mare's tail, which are two of the weeds that are really hard to control. The second one is simply that you have a mulch on the soil and a pigweed seed is very, very tiny. It only contains enough energy to produce a sprout about three quarters of an inch tall. And if it doesn't hit sunlight within that three quarters of an inch, it's, it'll die, it'll starve. It won't be able to photosynthesize. The third one is nitrogen manipulation. Because if that rye is following corn, corn has a rather inefficient nitrogen uptake. In order to, for corn to get 150 pounds of nitrogen in it, you have to give it 200. It doesn't take everything up out of the soil. There's always nitrogen left over after a well-fertilized corn crop. The nitrogen in that residue is in the form of protein, which weeds can't utilize. Not until it's thoroughly digested by microbes and broken back down into nitrate. Pigweeds and a lot of other weeds need their nitrogen in the nitrate form. They can't utilize protein. Well, when you plant soybeans into that basically zero nitrate environment, weeds cannot grow. Soybeans, they don't care. They're a legume. They produce nodules on the roots and the bacteria pull nitrogen out of the air, make it available to soybeans. Soybeans make their own nitrogen. The number one thing is crop rotation. We try to stick to a pretty straight corn soybean rotation. We're able to use different technologies on corn than, from, than what we use on soybeans, which helps us to uh, take different approaches every single year on how we're gonna try to control those weeds. Also the advent of new herbicide technologies and new genetic traits that allow us to use different herbicide applications. Those are things that have really allowed us to reduce the amount of tillage because we can be confident as we get into the season. We have the ability to control the weeds in the growing crops that 30 years ago when I was just a young guy, it wasn't possible and that required a lot more tillage on our part here on the farm. My recommendation for next year's weed control program is to consider which weeds you had difficulty controlling this year and then sit down with your crop advisor or your agronomist and work out a program that includes a pre-emergence herbicide that has multiple effective modes of action. This will not only help control the weeds next year, but will also help us to be good stewards of the chemistry that we have remaining and make these tools available uh, for the next generation.